you Sachin and thank you to the Agami team and all such very kind group of people who have wow. always talked us up and uh, supported our work and uh, championed our cause. Uh, I'm here on behalf of my organization TEAL, Terra Economics and Analytics Lab and I think the best way to start would be probably to just uh, maybe show you this clip. Bolo Uncle Ji. क्या सेवा कर सकता हूँ जी सर वो जो न्यू सपना विहार में सेक्टर थर्टी प्लॉट नंबर थर्टी टू थर्टी टू है वो असल में हमारा है जी वो आपका है तो ले लो आपका है तो ले लो देखो जी वो प्लॉट हमारा है हमारे नाम है आप चाहो तो ये कागज देखो कागज किसको दिखा रहे हो आपके कागज के मैं सौ कागज दिखा सकता हूं देखने सो प्रॉपर्टी डिस्प्यूट फ्रॉड इज समथिंग दैट सीम्स टू बी अ सरप्राइजिंगली इंड्योरिंग एंड फेमिलियर प्रॉब्लम फॉर मेनी ऑफ अस सो before i get uh, started into the delve into the weeds of this let's start by establishing a few technical concepts number 1 in india we follow a system known as presumptive titling which simply means i mean i know there's a room full of lawyers but it simply means that whenever you register a title on a property uh, the state does not guarantee that the title holder is the legitimate owner of that property it simply guarantees or simply registers the transaction from party a to party b so ultimately who is left to arbitrate in the case of a dispute it's the courts and what we are left with today in india is that we have a large volume of litigation to do with land and property cases clogging our courts on average these cases take more than 20 years to resolve uh, that's the average number uh, and uh, we see it all around us and we know many stories like that right so uh, as a result uh, uh, you know we have this entire middleman industry brokers lawyers title search clerks no offense to any of the lawyers here obviously uh, who are facilitating transaction but in a sense are giving that trust that you know when you have to go and buy a property put your life savings i'll just give you yahi hota hai ha exactly hota hai thank you yahi hota hai ye ek patta hota hai ki ji government office mein there is some document lying somewhere handwritten very hard to read very hard to interpret some guy takes you for right some guy saw kagaz laga sakte hain uske right so khurana is happy in this situation right now how does taking a slightly slight step back to 1594 uh the way we started recording uh, all of these uh, different types of land transactions raja todermal who was the finance minister of akbar devised the first system that we know of uh, to be widely used across the mughal empire to document land transaction the main source of revenue is land right uh, the british came uh, even greedier for revenues from land double down on this uh, and it became sort of an established system to measure agriculture land and the transactions post independence india uh, property rights are a fundamental right in the constitution so you need to now start recording different types of transactions uh, houses shops factories what not 1984 computers came around and the government of india said we should computerize nothing actually happened but they said so uh, finally in 1998 the first uh, known project that uh, you know we all hear about a lot uh, now particularly is that in karnataka uh, ias officers started digitizing land records putting them online the internet had come by that time it was the bhumi project right now what did that digitization lead to and so we start studying this i'll get into a little more detail but essentially what we have today is that we have across different states various efforts of digitization have taken place uh, there are different departments that have digitized one two uh, or three sets of records that are required for each properties that includes land records that includes the title transactions that includes uh, municipal order uh, litigation also is starting to get digitized so we have essentially different types of documents that are available from all of these different agencies a lot of linguistic divergence because you know land has been it's essentially a mirror of kind of ancient uh, the history of india in many ways and how it's developed right so we have how land revenue was recorded in different parts of the country under different systems uh, you know obscure terminologies khata khasra khatoni and may, many more gedwari many more obscure ones that you kind of come across a lot right so four years ago few us sort of data nerds we sort of thought that okay now it's been you know more than two decades since we've started uh, digitizing our records across the country is there enough to say like let's say start with a locality in delhi 
Okay, in one locality, can we just start mapping and figure out how many properties can we really determine this for? Who is the owner, right? Who, whether there's any dispute going on in that property, what, whether there's anything else wrong. So if you were a potential buyer and you had to buy that, you would be able to, at the click of a button, see all of that information, right? That should be the next logical conclusion. Uh, so we started creating this for a locality and the answer was surprising to us. We were very skeptical initially because we were all very skeptical of government efforts of uh, these types of things and especially in land. Uh, but we were surprised, there's actually quite a lot of information available. So we started doing it for the rest of Delhi after that. Uh, we got a pretty good response from various different lenders. Uh, that was one of our primary customers because they, particularly affordable housing finance, there's a lot of issues when it comes to doing due diligence on property, right? And that's, there's a lot of risk that's also taken away. And plus, uh, you know, a lot of times the different lenders complain to us that lawyers are not entirely always <laughs> reliable in terms of what they provide and they all always take a long time and they charge a lot. So since then, it's been a four year journey. I'll cut to the chase. We're now working in 14 states. Uh, we now have a few, a few hundred, uh, no, sorry, more than 100 million properties in our database and we're trying to add a few more. But the, what we do is we provide essentially an API based integration for different lenders. And this is particularly salient for lenders who are lending in tier two, tier three cities, uh, peripheries of the main metros to be able to determine whether a property has uh, a clear uh, title or a other series of things. I'm going to skip this particular slide because it gets too technical, but I want to give my learnings from this journey because that's more important. But I, I, I'm sure no one wants to keep on hearing about real estate. So first, there are a lot of legacy challenges in India that are very challenging, but are also very interesting and pose some great opportunities to learn and develop solutions for that could indeed be also relevant for other parts of the world, right? I think that uh, for us, at least the journey of learning about all these complexities in land real estate markets has been, it's been tough at many times, but it's also been very enriching. And I think there's something to be said about working on core Indian problems such as this one uh, and others that have to do with law and justice since we are here as part of Agami. Uh, and uh, uh, that well, there is a huge scope of public goods and public good provision when it comes to digitization, digital data and digital tools to be able to use that, right? We used a lot of our own tech that we developed, a lot of our own data dictionaries that we annotated, that we collated initially quite painfully, but there was not much available out there to do that. And I know there are different efforts that are taking place across uh, many groups here and I think there's, you know, there, there's a fantastic set of things that need to be done and there's a huge opportunity to do so as well. Uh, the second is the mindset that we are sort of, the way we approached it is we approached it from, first from a data engineering perspective that we start by creating, so first research, all of these complex different systems, document and then start building one by one, one property at a time. Our initial database when we went to Delhi we literally walked around the locality, mapped out each property to verify it's actually correct. And we try, try to think of systems that would scale in that way. And I think there is something also here that uh, uh, obviously we're a country of engineers, there's something very naturally comes to us. And the second is about the mindset of a plumber, right? So you basically maintain the plumbing. So in a way, we're kind of trying to figure out how do we become the last, we sort of maintain the pipes that flow with this type of information, that it's actually correct, that it is of good quality, that it's reliable, it's updated, and so on and so forth. And I think there is some something to be said about how we now shift from a lot of things in governance, a lot of things in our communities, going from the physical space to the digital space, there's a lot of things around data that we also can, uh, as a result, think about, right? So the, the, obviously there is, I'm preaching to the choir, but right to public data, but right to perhaps clean data. Uh, you know, maybe that's the next logical step now for the RTI movement that began to open up a lot of different government information that was otherwise behind the scenes, behind the clouds, and in, and in turn, that would catalyze sort of transparency, innovation, and accountability, right? Uh, now, a lot of this information is not easy to interpret, it's not easy to translate, and you don't have many options available, especially in the public domain, that can more easily translate this information. So for instance, we were putting in different names of colonies in Delhi, you know, climate colony, I think is one colony, which uh, you know, we kept on coming across, it was actually Jalvayu colony. Uh, you know, there was things like, if you put Khasra into Google Translate, it translates into measles, uh, you know, so things like that, right? So, I mean, those things will obviously get solved by, you know, AI over time, but there is something to be said about also having 
public data sources that can allow models to be trained and in a context specific manner to allow this, right? Uh, the other bit is on the interoperability, right? So now we've been hearing about digitization efforts all this time and we thought, oh great, you know, this area has been digitized. But actually it's not easy to link that with a completely different administrative jurisdiction. So the courts, for instance, when the courts mention a dispute on a property, it's very difficult to be able to figure out whether it's that same one. The only unique identifier a lot of time end up, ends up being the address. So a lot of our work was in terms of understanding how to structure that address. And as you can understand in India, that's very painful, especially when you're translating from vernacular uh, to different types of languages. So is there any way we can think about how to create better public repositories of places and of names and of those types of uh, 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 mappings, right? Uh, the other one is on um, uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, so the community, right? So the community of different actors here and the one thing I can maybe leave you with a thought for is that whether we can have this sort of community which safeguards and ensures just the way in Wikipedia you have a community of very small, a uh, small number of dedicated individuals who make sure that they maintain the world's encyclopedia, right? Um, uh, you know, it's, it's just the same set of volunteers who are the gatekeepers of that quality, of that accuracy, of that independence and making sure uh, that is there. Can we do the same thing for uh, various types of public and community data in India? And uh, hopefully with that in mind, we can prevent, with that transparency, we can prevent many Khuranas from thriving. Thank you.